Welcome back to Switzer on Australia's Business Channel. Now in 2012, my colleague Paul Rico from the Switzer Super Report put together an income-based stock portfolio which has shot the lights out. He joins us uh, live in the studio for more on the performance of that portfolio and also to tell us about the new growth-based portfolio that he's put together for the report. How are you, mate? I'm very well, Peter. How are you? Good. Now, of course, if you did badly, I would have had to bring you on the program. You wouldn't have brought me on. I would have. I would have. <laughs> I'm so strapping down, I would have had to. But, okay, remember, what was the, the thinking behind okay. that? Okay, worth taking it back a sec. What we're after to do is trying to create tax-effective income for a superannuation fund. Yeah. So I created a portfolio that was targeting a little over 6% uh, dividend yield. Mm. I, that was pretty well all fully frank. So to a fund in accumulation, it was in the sevens. To a fund in, in pension, it was in the 8%. Yeah. Uh, so my idea with the portfolio... And it was much better than turn deposits? Yeah. That was the thinking. And yeah. My idea with the portfolio was to try to get somewhere that was reasonably close to index. I didn't have too much risk. Recognising that if it had higher income, the chances were in a, in a, in a rising market, it would slightly underperform. Yeah. And in a bear market, it would probably outperform. So yeah. it was trying to minimise the risk in terms of uh, what the investor would take. Yeah. Uh, last year, we ended up with a little over 20%. Mm. Uh, that was about 6% dividend and a bit more than 14% in capital gain. Mm. That was about 4% better than the market overall when you add in the accumulation benefits, yeah. uh, which surprised me. Yeah, because uh, you, you weren't trying to shoot the lights out. You no, were actually trying 6 or 7%. Yeah, I was actually felt in a, in a strong market it would underperform, Peter, and that yeah. was because most of the sectors we went for, and it was very much a, a top-down approach, mm. were what are traditionally defensive sectors. And, tr tr and normally when a market rallies, the defensive sectors don't do Coffee. it well. Yeah, and because the thing is what we learned was everyone was prepared, to, well, a lot of people were prepared to give the stock market a go, but they weren't going to do it in a too risky way. They wanted the safe stuff and that was the dividend. And that was the story of 2012, yeah. that the, the so-called defensive sectors, you know, the financials, the telecommunications through Telstra, mm. the consumer staples through West Farmers and Woolworths and, you know, and Coca-Cola, mm. they were the sectors that did really well. Yeah. And the market went up and those sectors outperformed. So as a result, um, our dividend portfolio did pretty well. Okay, so, you know, founder of Comsec, Stockbroker Hall of Fame, which is one of the greatest just, recommendations. Just keep, keep, keep rolling on, Peter. <laughs> no, but but you know, you, you've been in the game a long time. What do you like for 2013? Well, I think for the, the income investor out there, mm. there's still a little bit of value left in those so-called defensive mm. sectors. We mm. now have you know, cash down at, uh, at 3%. You know, you can get a 90-day term deposit, you might get 4.2%, 4.3%. Mm. There are still dividend yields out there around 5 5.5%. Uh, fully franked, so there is still some value. So I think for a so a retiree could probably still could get six to eight percent this year. Well, that might be stretching it, mm. but I mean NAB, for example, uh, even though it's rallied from a bit under twenty-four dollars to uh, almost twenty, a bit over twenty-nine dollars a day, it had a mm. huge rally in the last uh, couple of months. Yeah, uh, that's still at just over twenty-nine dollars, yielding uh, six point four percent. And so, you know, that's pre-tax for a superannuation fund and accumulation, that's more on the sevens, and for something in pension, that's in the eight. So there are still some reasonable value out there. The secret is to put in a portfolio and try to take out some of the market risk. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, stocks you put together. Is this more a growth one this year? Because you think there's more growth? Well, I've also got a growth one. Yeah. So we will do the income first or? Well, well, let's have a quick quick look. I'm not sure what we've got in terms of tables. Guys, put up the table with, pardon? And no table for this. So we're okay, we'll okay. just we'll just quickly run through it then. <laughs> okay. So the important thing is the income portfolio. We yep. we, we continue to be overweight the more traditional uh, defensive sectors. So your financials, uh, your consumer staples, and your telecommunications. Yeah. And conversely, you're underweight materials and the energy stocks and uh, some of the industrials. Good. Okay. In, in the growth bias portfolio, it's basically the reverse. So we're overweight uh, uh, materials. Uh, we're overweight healthcare, which has done really well in, in 2012 as well, mm. and overweight a little bit some of the industrial stocks, and we're underweight uh, the financials, mm. and underweight the telecommunications, and underweight the consumer stocks. Well, can we just quickly go through the stocks in your growth portfolio? Yeah. And I'll pick a few out 
the you know, people at home might be thinking, why is that there? Okay. okay. So let's talk about the, the financials. Yeah. Uh, we've got the four banks. They're still but, in there. Even yeah, though, but, even but, but, but we're overweight National Australia Bank compared to the Commonwealth Bank. And you were anti right? National Australia Bank a year ago. Oh, right? <laughs> you love <laughs> CBA, got that one right. I still love CBA, yeah. it, but it, National Australia Bank is, is a lot cheaper. It's yeah. coming a long way, yeah. but it's still a lot cheaper than the Commonwealth yeah. Bank. So Good. we're overweight, uh, for example, National Australia Bank and ANZ, mm. which potentially have better growth prospects than Westpac and Commonwealth Bank. Yep. We've added a couple of the regional banks in there because if you're a little more adventurous, think the market's going to take off, think that consumer confidence is going to restore, yeah. funding margins are going to come down, yep. chances are the regional banks, which have got really badly battered over the last two or three years, will do better. So what's the style one there? So I think Bank of Queensland, yep. uh, it looks pretty attractive. And so Gold Coast is starting to improve. Gold Coast well, might, might be turning the corner. So, yep. so that's, mm. uh, the, that's where the, the orientation, the bias is towards. On the material side, you've got to stick with BHP and Rio and go be long this market. Mm. Uh, there's some prospects around Orica. Yeah. Uh, computer share, for example, in the IT space, if the market continues to rally, they'll benefit from a global improvement in stock markets because they're very exposed to the activity in the primary markets and listing space. Mm. So they're the sort of stocks you're looking for. Uh, and within that, still have a, a largely sector approach such that we still got some protection on the downside. Mm. So it's, it's an orientation towards growth, Peter, and that's what we're, we're, we're aiming for. Okay, NAB was a, a surprise poor Ricard selection given how negative you were once upon a time. Are there, are there any other stocks in the portfolio that you're, you're even surprised that you supported? Uh, look, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> it's a loaded question. that's a loaded question. Look, I think there's, there's been some value in some of the industrial stocks. Toll, for example, yeah, has got badly beaten company. up, yeah. uh, has got some opportunity. Uh, you know, Crown, uh, the, certainly a growth stock in uh, the consumer discretionary sector. Mm. I'm not sure I'm in love with the retail stocks yet. They've had a big, big rally the last month and a half, so mm. I haven't got any retail stocks in there. But mm. I think that uh, Crown is certainly with what... Uh, uh, Mr. Packer is doing, got some opportunities in, in Hong Kong mm. and Macau, uh, and they're the type of stocks you're looking for. So it's, it's, not a, it's an orientation towards growth. Mm. It's still going to provide a reasonable return yep. uh, in terms of dividend, and that's yeah. very important. And, for, and for left field events can always, can always shock us. You know, and, yep. and a left field event where all the X factors come from, by the very nature, you don't know they're coming. But I've got a feeling, Paul, it's going to be a reasonable year on, on the stock market. I guess you wouldn't be shooting for a growth portfolio unless you thought that as well. Look, I think I've been surprised just how strong the rally's been in, 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 in January and in the early part of February. I yep. think you and I have been pretty bullish most of last year. Yep. Uh, I continue to be bullish. There is so much money out there. I'm like everyone else hoping for the pullback. Mm. Yeah. So you can buy the stocks <laughs> that you like. Some of the stocks, yeah. yeah, which is not a bad issue because a lot of people get panicked when the pullback comes. Yeah. And often I find the pullback comes when you least expect it. When you think, you nearly have the capitulation and say, okay, well, I'll buy again and bang, it happens. But hanging in there and believing it. Um, one last question, Paul. Um, if people want to get access to the old portfolio and the new one, basically if they, they sign up for that, that 21 free day trial for the Switzer Super Report, they'll get access to this portfolio. That's right. If you, if you go to switzersuperreport.com.au, yeah. uh, you can get a free trial. And hopefully you might think about being a subscriber yeah. to uh, uh, our magazine, that, or our newsletter that comes out twice a week. Yeah. Well, if, they, if our guys have brought the table, you, I wouldn't have had to give that plug, but give them back. I want to show you the actual portfolio. So that's uh, Switzer Report, switzersuperreport.com.au. All right, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Peter. That was Paul Rickard, the old founder of Comsec, and he knows what he's talking about. After break, we'll find out why Australia's largest member-owned retailer is bucking the downturn in the retail sector. Plus, Deloitte's Keith Skinner will tell us why CFOs are becoming more optimistic. Stay with us. Thank you.